Good morning. We welcome all who are joining us from your home. We are so pleased that you are with us in spirit. We respectfully ask that all cell phones be silenced. Today, we are celebrating the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I am Audrey Wilson. Our second lector is Joe Tufo, and our leader of song is Deborah Eder. The deacon of the mass is Deacon Mace Mazzoni. Monsignor Michael McCormack is our principal celebrant. Next weekend, there will be a second collection for the Mission Cooperative Appeal. In support of the appeal, Father Saijo Jacob will be preaching at all our masses. Please see the parish bulletin for more information. With the impact of the pandemic considerably reduced, it is again possible for the faithful to assemble for the Eucharist and therefore, beginning on Sunday, August the 15th, the obligation to attend Mass in person on Sundays and Holy Days will be reinstated. In order to save a life, as we have been announcing, we will be participating in the distribution of Narcan kits as a public service to our civic community on Tuesday evening, August the 3rd, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. On our parking lot, we will be hosting a drive-through event. At that time, the Bucks County Drug and Alcohol Commission will be providing free Narcan kits. Please see the parish bulletin for more information. Our parish school, Holy Family Regional Catholic School, is accepting new registrations for the school year beginning in September. There are enrollment flyers at the doors of the church. Please see the parish bulletin for more information. This week's pot of gold jackpot prize is $26,000. Tickets are available in the vestibule of the church and also at the rectory. As we prepare for mass, the prayer for priestly vocations can be found on the inside cover of the blue prayer book. Please stand and let us pray. Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up worthy ministers for your altars and ardent but gentle servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our entrance hymn is 208, Praise to the Lord, 208.
morning, everyone. I'd like to especially welcome those who are joining us from their home. In addition to your own personal intentions for today's Mass, we especially want to remember and commend to the Lord, Ruth O'Malley. And as we pray for Ruth, commending her to the Lord, especially want to welcome uh, members of the Ancient Order of Hibernians of Bristol who are here with us today. Ruth was their Vice President. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers 
with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we'll have the children's liturgy of the word. I invite children to come forward in order to go over to the St. Joseph Chapel. Children in kindergarten, first, second, and third grades. If anyone is hesitating, encourage them. If any parent or older sibling would like to go with them as encouragement, they're welcome to go. My dear children, you will now go to hear God's word, to reflect on the wonderful things God has done for us. We will await your return so together we can celebrate the Eucharist. Go now and listen to God's word to you. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, would that we had died at the Lord's hands in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our full of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight, you shall eat flesh and in the morning you shall have your full of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the fertility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Lord, you, Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. 
And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has sent his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a story about a country priest who admitted that he was living with apathy, rejection, even hostility from his parishioners. He said that some of the pillars of the church had already left his parish. Some members of the pastoral council resigned. Even the organist resigned. And just recently he received a call from his bishop. And the bishop asked him to please stop upsetting your parishioners or you're going to lose them all. Priest was overwhelmed even to the point of being sick. And began to ask himself, is it worth it? Is it worth it? The priest knew that believing in Jesus is hard, very hard. To practice the faith is very difficult. Not only for that priest and many others, but perhaps even more so for parents who have adult children and they're disappointed in their son or daughter's lifestyle or behaviors or the lack of practice of the faith. And they look back on their parenting and wonder whether it was worth it. Their Catholic education, their modeling for them over the years. And now they see their children very distant from the church. And they ask themselves quietly, was it worth it? 
Today's gospel from John chapter 6 is a direct continuation of last Sunday's gospel. Next week, there will be another portion of this gospel from chapter 6. And ordinarily, two weeks from now, we would hear the concluding part of chapter 6. But that date will be August the 15th, and we'll be celebrating the Blessed Mother under the title of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today's gospel, direct continuation. And remember last week, Jesus fed 5,000 people. And the people were impressed and they were filled. But Jesus was concerned that they were going to carry him off and make him a king, so Jesus moved away from them, went to another place. But as we just heard in today's gospel, they found out where he was, went looking for him and found him. But the reason they were looking was for another miracle, more food. They failed to understand that Jesus was speaking about himself, that they should be pursuing him, not just the bread. The 12 apostles were part of the 5,000. Even they themselves were impressed with the miracle as they were so often. But they eventually came to realize that it wasn't the food that they wanted, it was Jesus. At the end of this chapter, Jesus will turn to them after others have left, who would no longer follow Jesus. He would ask them, are you two going to leave? And Peter spoke and said, no. He would stay. They would stay. Most of this crowd did not stay. They never did understand. They didn't realize that Jesus was inviting them to a much deeper, personal, intimate relationship with him. That's what Jesus desires for all of us as a community and as individuals. As I was reflecting on this gospel and the homily that I would be giving, I thought to myself, so often I speak in the first person here, sometimes we can be so caught up in our prayer, saying certain prayers, even in coming to Mass, and moving through the ritual, praying the prayers of the Mass. And so often we stop there and never really cultivate a personal relationship with Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the more that we have that bond, that intimacy with him, then we will be better prepared to share him with others, beginning with our own family members, our colleagues at work, our friends. And so what was it that upset the parishioners in that parish? What was the priest preaching? He was preaching the need to come to Mass every week, to worthily receive Holy Communion, to receive Holy Communion without mortal sin. He encouraged them to frequent the Sacrament of Reconciliation not every couple years, 
frequently, to acknowledge our sinfulness, and most importantly, to be forgiven, to begin again, to spend time before the Blessed Sacrament. And there we can cultivate and deepen our relationship with the Lord Jesus. To read the scriptures, not just listen to them at Mass, but to actually spend time outside Mass as God speaks to us through his word and then respond. To forgive. Not picking and choosing who we're going to forgive. Forgive them all, even those who are currently hurting us. The priest said to follow the Ten Commandments. He said they're not suggestions. They're commandments given to us for our good. To observe the precepts of the church. Again, not picking and choosing. And for all that, His parishioners were mad at him for disturbing them, disturbing their way of life. In reality, what he was doing is exactly what St. Paul did. And we heard of that in the second reading today, his letter to the Ephesians. Put off the old self, put on the new. And so we might ask ourselves, where do we stand? Are we ready and willing not only to continue to come to Mass, worthily receive Holy Communion, but also make time for a personal, deep, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ? This is what he wants. If we were to do that and work at it with God's grace, only with his grace, and we begin to live our Catholic faith, practice our Catholic faith, day in and day out, we're going to find that it is very difficult. There are going to be many obstacles, first within ourselves, asking ourselves, is it worth it? but then also to be prepared for those around us who will see something very different and it will make them uncomfortable. And perhaps they will put up an obstacle. Then we will find out that yes, it is hard to follow Christ. Pray, God, that when all is said and done, at the end of each day, we can say, yes, Lord, you're worth it. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as God's holy people, we acknowledge his kindness and faithfulness throughout the generations as we now bring our needs before him. For all members of the church, may the gift of the Eucharist nourish our souls and help us to work together as we strive to walk in the way of righteousness and holiness of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit enlighten and embolden them as they seek resolutions to the problems that plague our world. Let us pray to the Lord. For the victims of the recent floods, tornadoes, and the ongoing wildfires, may they find strength in their faith and consolation through the goodness and outreach of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the marginalized and lonely who hunger for the love of others, may the grace of God awaken a sense of compassion in the people around them. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish envisioning team, may the Holy Spirit enlighten their hearts and minds as they continue their work to develop a parish pastoral plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the young men and women of St. Francis Caprini Parish, may an appreciation for the gift of a vocation to the priesthood, diaconate and religious life be given to those you have chosen and may they have the strength to encouragement to follow the call. Let us pray to the Lord. For police, firefighters, and members of the military, may they be protected from harm as they serve to protect others and for all veterans who have served our country and thus maintain our freedom as a nation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick of our community and all those who requested our prayers, including those reflected in the white intercessory book. May they be comforted by the caregiving and compassion of others. We especially pray for Francis Allegrini, Barb Altieri, Joanne Ames, Pat Barnett, Ralph Connor, Tom Connor, Nicholas Corrado, John Doyle, Casey Eisenbray, Rosemary Erickson, Patrick Galloway, Mark Ravante, Michael Hennessy, Tom Holden, John Holden, J.T. Nuttall, Joe Kruntz, Shirley Lakatash, John Lounsbury, Connor Scott Maw, Ariel Moya, Danico Mulholland, Andrea Richards, and Greg Schaefer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. 
for all who have died. May they join in the, the angels and saints in giving glory to God forever, as we especially pray for El Caruso, Mark Thompson, and John Sable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also commend to the Lord Ruth O'Malley that she too be received into the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of compassion and mercy, who heard the prayers of your people in the desert, hear our prayers today and answer them according to your holy will. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is 489, O Lord, I am not worthy, 489. and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, in accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Now 
the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, Ruth, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We invite those who are participating with us from their home and therefore not able to physically receive Holy Communion to please join in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn will be 333, Eat This Bread, 333. Three, three.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we conclude our liturgy, I thank all of you for being here in person. I thank all those who are joining us from their home. I want to take a moment to thank our choir. Uh, they've been meeting uh, and practicing all summer long uh, under the direction of Gene Madden and, of course, today our leader song, Deborah Eder, and with the assistance of our principal organist, Hank Wajda. We are so blessed to have so many people involved in our music ministry, and there are more uh, others, as you know, but certainly want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord in your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is 325, I am the bread of life, 325.